Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about writing horror scenes. Now, if you're looking to write a horror story or a whole horror plot, I recommend watching my plotting horror video, which I'll link up in the card for you guys. In this video, we're really going to be focusing on the scene itself. When it comes to making something feel scary in writing, it's all about the adjectives. For example, if you're writing a gross gooey monster, instead of saying green goo, try for example, radioactive sludge or sticky mucus or glowing bile. You might need to pull out your thesaurus for this, but basically, whatever you're trying to describe, find a gross alternative. Things that people tend to think are gross are things that are associated with waste of some kind. Think bodily fluids or something decaying. What if instead of gross, though, you're going for creepy, like a ghost story or a mystery? In those cases, let's focus on colorful descriptors of unnatural movements. Think creeping, crawling, slow drifts, and then sudden jolts. Think of the ways that less human types of animals move, such as insects or octopuses, and put that type of description into the writing. This is going to give your writing a creepy or alien sort of vibe to it. Try describing inanimate objects in ways that we know aren't really true. Maybe a house breathes, or the bushes are watching, or a radio is listening to you. What makes a descriptor scary is the invocation of the unreal, the unsettling, or the unpleasant. When bringing this into your scene, try describing senses other than sight. When entering a scary place in reality, you're far more likely to notice things such as the smells, the temperature, or the sense around you before you really cue into the visuals that are happening. So when you're writing something scary, keep the lights off. Save the visuals for last. What your partner in the role play or your reader is doing in their imagination to fill in the gaps of what you're not describing is powerful. As humans, we are visual creatures, so leaving the visuals for last is going to make everything more frightening for your partner. When writing horror scenes, just like any other, we're going to need to get into the characters' heads. So for horror, think fight, flight, or freeze. When faced with anxious or scary things, everyone has one of these three types of reactions. Think about what type your character has. Are they a runner that would just turn around and not investigate a creepy graveyard at night? Are they a fighter where when a monster jumps out, their first reaction is to throw a punch? Or do they freeze? This is the most common reaction. You're so scared that your brain won't make a decision and you become the proverbial deer in the headlights. If you're unsure, go with this as the option for what your character would do, because this is by far the most common reaction people have. When describing what your character does in a horrifying situation, keep the descriptions visceral and of the body. Don't say they're scared. Instead, describe a racing heartbeat, goosebumps on their arms, or sweaty palms. Showing and not telling is far scarier. In fact, I would say resist the urge to overtly explain much at all. Just like when we said to show and not tell, I recommend any overt explanation that you want to include, don't include it until the end because what the other person is imagining in their mind is far scarier than what you could overtly explain. So just keep it to describing the things going on. I would also say, take this to the next level. Don't put in your role play where the monster came from. Don't give your serial killer a tragic backstory and don't explain who started it. It's totally okay, of course, to plot these things out of character with your partner so you both are on the same page, but don't put them into the threads themselves. If you do, it removes that sense of dread and suspense and surprise, and ultimately, that's gonna make it not feel like horror. Typically, people don't fear things that they understand. For a more realistic example, once you understand why an abuser is doing their abusing, it takes some of that horrific element from it. This is why victims often rationalize such things to be able to stay in that situation and survive mentally. Resist these types of explanations in your writing if you want it to feel truly horrific. Like most genres, horror comes in a ton of flavors. 
From spooky horror to suspense to thrillers to cosmic horror, it's important to think about the conventions of the particular horror genre that you're writing in and try to kind of follow along with those established conventions. And also, like any genre, the best advice I can give you for writing better scenes of that genre is to read more in that genre. Look up the most popular authors in the genre you want to write and read as much as you can by them. Pay attention to how they pace their scenes and what parts of the prose that you feel are scary. Then take those things about their writing and apply them to your own. The only real difference here is that role-playing is writing for an audience of one, whereas a book, of course, you've got many people in your audience, but all the principles are really still the same. So I also want to take a moment to talk about when we're role-playing horror, kind of how that works with your partner. Because the goal is basically to scare each other, you'll need to have a conversation about limits. Your goal should be to make each other uncomfortable, not triggered. Explicitly ask their feelings on blood, gore, and trauma that you want to employ in the roleplay. Now, if you want to keep things basically plotless, you don't have to reveal all of your secrets, but you need to find out what their limits are about the certain things that you want to write in the roleplay. Your partner has to be okay with these types of things happening in the scenes you're going to write together. It could be as simple as, how do you feel about serious injury to your character, such as losing an arm or a leg? You don't have to necessarily do exactly that, like remove a limb, but you need to know how they might react to a serious injury if you're wanting to do some type of serious injury in the roleplay. It's important to understand how they're going to react out of character. Are they going to be okay with it? Are they going to freak out on you? Is this going to be something that causes them to ghost? Keep in mind also, when it comes to horror roleplays, Often we don't really know what our limits are until we're presented with that particular limit in a roleplay. No limits might be true up until the point that you actually are faced with one of those limits. So don't be afraid when it comes to horror if you or your partner are getting too uncomfortable to retcon things or to change details or whatever needs to happen to let the roleplay continue. Keep communication lines open and honest and you will be able to write horror scenes together no problem. So those are all of my horror scene writing tips. If you missed my horror plot video, I recommend going and watching that as well. It has a lot of good stuff in it. What are some of your other horror tips? Right now it's Halloween. It's a wonderful time to talk about them. So let me know down below. Thank you very much for watching to the end of the video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell if you want to help my channel grow. If you'd like to support me, link to my Patreon is in the description, as well as my Amazon page to buy my book. Right here is where the names of my $5 and up patrons will go starting in November. And don't forget to make it a great day.